a popular female Canadian promoter of events, was found with multiple holes inside her room at an apartment complex in Runaway Bay, St. Anne. Her relatives in Canada suspect that the man who took her life may have been an individual that she was dating in Jamaica at the time when she came here to conduct a business. The person who passed away has been identified as 43-year-old Latoya Alcindor of Markham in Ontario, Canada. She was found with multiple holes to the upper areas at an apartment complex she reportedly rented in Runaway Bay, Senan on Thursday, January 21st. The incident is currently being investigated by the Senan police. However, little information has been provided. The passing of Al Sindor, who has been described as a popular figure in the Caribbean community in Toronto, has been making news headlines throughout Canada. Based on information coming from her relatives, Miss Alcindor traveled to Jamaica on December 27, 2020 to pursue some business opportunities and met a friend who she was seeing. The male friend was last seen with Miss Alcindor on Monday, January 18th. This led to her expressing the belief that it is a possibility that this man may have taken the life of her cousin. It was also expressed that she is open that with this media attention on this case, it will help in finding the individual so that they can get some answers to the tragic passing of Miss Alcindor. Miss Alcindor was a mother of two and was a promoter who invested heavily in making costumes for the Toronto Caribbean Carnival, formerly called Caribana. Another relative of Miss Alcindor has hosted heartfelt tributes to her across social media. The Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports, Olivia Babs Grains, has issued urgent calls for the implementation of reparations for Africans and persons of African descent who were impacted by some serious issues of the past. She said that reparations should address the moral, economic, political and legal obligations of states in relation to past and present issues rooted in those dangerous activities of the past and colonialism such as issues involving bias, xenophobia and other intolerant issues. Providing reparations for these dangerous activities of the past requires that states not only fulfill remedial obligations resulting from specific historical dangerous acts but also to transform contemporary structures involving inequality bias and subordination that are the product of the centuries old machinery built through slavery and issues of colonialism the minister was addressing a webinar in commemoration of world day for african and afro-descendant culture on sunday january 24th which was held under the theme people of african descent they went on to encourage the United Nations the Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization to work even more closely with the NCR and other entities to promote measures to address inherent imbalances in our historic and current social and economic landscape. Monday, there was a serious shelling incident in Arnett Gardens, St. Andrew, and of course an investigation has been launched following reports that three men were armed. Two lost their lives, according to residents. The men were harmed at the corner of Collie Smith Drive and 9th Street. One of the men was identified as a taxi operator. Some residents in the area have since blamed the police for the shellings. The authorities have, however, refuted these claims and have said that the individuals who lost their lives were standing, among others, along the roadway at about 5.50 p.m., when men drove up in a motor car and opened shellings, hitting members of the group. The persons who were hurt were rushed to the hospital where two of them were pronounced by the medical team. When the scene was visited, they realized that there was a group of individuals who were extremely upset, including a female who said that she was the mother of one of the men who had passed away. All of these persons had gathered at the location of the shellings. The woman was overwhelmed by grief 
and she had a different story to tell. Her claim was that the police had taken the life of her son innocently and that he had not committed or done anything wrong, nor was he involved in any dangerous activities. She said that he was returning home from reporting to the police station when he was armed and taken out. Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports Olivia Babsi Grange has paid tribute to veteran journalist Ken Allen who passed away on Sunday at the University Hospital of the West Indies after a short illness. The former editor-in-chief was all of 87 years old. According to Grange, they are saying goodbye to a newspaper man who was among the best in the Caribbean. The minister further emphasized that Mr. Allen, who passed away just shy of his birthday, was legendary for his journalistic accomplishments in his more than 60-year association with Jamaican media. Ken Allen worked his way up from sub-editor in 1952, distinguishing himself with each step to his appointment as editor-in-chief of the popular Jamaican media house in 1992. Along the way, he took the time to nurture and guide his younger colleagues who have all noted his kindness and care for them. According to Olivia, even as we mourn the departure of Ken, she emphasized that we should all remember all that Ken did for the development of journalism in Jamaica and the Caribbean. She further said that Allen was deservedly conferred with the Order of Distinction Commander Class. He was also honored by the Press Association of Jamaica for outstanding service to Jamaican journalism. Of course, Miss Grange went on to extend her condolences to his family, friends, and associates. Now, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day and goodbye.